Holy God and Heavenly Father, we come to thee this morning, Lord, thanking you and praising you for the sunshine. Thank you for the day that you've given us the ability to, to come out to your house and worship you and lift up your name and glorify you for all the things you do. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've watched over us. And Lord, uh, you're just a great God, and we love you, and we appreciate everything that you do. We ask you to be with us in our service today. Bless the preaching and the singing, God, that your name be glorified and your name be uplifted, but most of all, someone may realize their lost condition and some and accept you before it's eternally too late. Thank you, God, for what you've done and for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ron. Uh, we got a phone call was it yesterday, I believe it was, from Della McDaniels, passing on her thanks to the church for everything that we've done for them over through the holidays. And, you know, it, thanks is a good word, but we didn't do it for the thankness. We've done it because out of our heart of uh, that God given us a love that we want to take care of those in need. So uh, remember the McDaniels family as we pray down through the days and all those others, as I said, that, that can't get out to God's house this morning. Page 285, 285 for the first selection this morning. <coughs> <coughs> He'll never, never leave you, nor leave, and let you sit there in that old hospital room or wherever you might be. You're not alone if you got Jesus in your heart this morning. We need some sunlight this morning, so page 271. I need more than sunlight this morning. I need a, a helper this morning. Janie, you want to come up here and lead this morning? <laughs> <coughs>
Has everybody had a chance? To say hello to everybody this morning. Hello. If we haven't, I'm going to do something a little different in this next song on page 248. I'd like for y'all to stand as we sing this page two four this song on page 248. And sometime during this song, turn around and say hi to your neighbors this morning. Let's let's be friendly this morning. Let's let's enjoy God's presence right. in, in God's service. Page 248. Let's all stand. <laughs> down and I'd like to ask our pastors to ask the blessing on this remaining part of the service. Lord, we thank you for those folks that have made it out to worship and God, we're thankful for those folks who are at home today watching this or listening to it. God, I pray that you would bless them and give them uh, comfort and peace as well, Lord. We pray that you would encourage and strengthen through the words and the songs that are sang and spoken through this service. God, keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated, and thank you very much. Appreciate that this morning. Our pastor mentioned songs this morning. I don't know who might have come this way with a song this morning. Debbie or Angie or Jan or Connie or Jim or Ron Henthorne or <laughs> Regina or somebody's going to sing this morning other than me. I can tell you that. I, I just about sung out. I don't know why, but I can't hardly, <coughs> can't hardly get it out this morning, but that's all right, too. Someone come and sing for us this morning. Oh, come on, Ron. Come on, sing for us. Thank the Lord for everything he does for me. I, I was talking to a guy the other day and said, I think I've adopted a new motto for this year. It's going to be uh, win one and 21. But I got <laughs> thinking about that. You know, that's not right. It ought to be win some yeah. in 21. <laughs> we ought to be more... Uh, zillion 
and more expired to see many come in and be saved and not just one. But I love the Lord today and, and I appreciate all he's done for me. I thank him for what he did for me last year and all those troubles and trials we went through. And Everybody's hoping 21 will be a lot better, but you know what, folks? It may not be. And uh, you read the Bible, it, it, it may not be even better, but one thing's for sure, God's better. God never changes, and he's good all the time. Amen. I love him this morning. appreciate everything he does for me. Bless you, brother. Bless your heart. Yeah, when I was putting that out there on the south, I couldn't make up my mind. And I, and after I put it on, I said, well, I should change it. But anyhow, we, we, we need to win some. You know? Just If we all won one, that would be great. But if we all win some, that's some, some better. But uh, let's, let's keep trying to persuade our, our lost loved ones to listen to God's word somewhere down through the, through the year. They, it just Maybe just one word from, from God or from, from you might help them make, make that decision. The best decision they'll ever make in their life is to receive Jesus as their Savior. Who's going to come and sing for us this morning? Come on, Angie, and sing for us while she's coming. We, we thank God for Angie and what she does around here and for J.D. And we thank God for all of you. You know, uh, I, I sometimes don't, don't pass on that appreciation, but I do appreciate everyone in this church and what they do to make this church a, the church that it is. You know, I don't feel good in body this morning. Um, back's messed up. My hip joint ain't working right. But, um, you know, the, for the new year, my thing was I wanted to grow closer to the Lord. And the best way to do that is be obedient and do what he has you to do. So this song's been on my heart, and I'm going to try to get through it. So just keep me in your prayers. <clears throat> Shackled by a heavy burden Neat the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me.
for the ones that need it, Amen. or just the uplifting of the church. You know, just just to be able to keep these doors open. We need prayer. We, you know, I mean, from the person down to, to, to mowing the grass to the person that stands up there and leads the service to the preacher and his wife. Everybody needs prayer. Amen. You know, and 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 and, and everyone has a part. They can do that. Amen. Regardless of what your physical condition is, even online, you can say a prayer and help us lift the church. Amen. I need prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. While they're coming, somebody else with a word of praise this morning. Somebody else. I want to ask again for Mom this morning. If she she was planning on coming, but she's just too cold blooded and she keeps her house like ninety, and so when she goes outside, she's super cold. And so just remember her. Angie, that was great. It was really good. You know, my body's hurting. I hope I can sing that good. <laughs> I don't know. But if you keep it up, I hope your body hurts all the time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great singing. That's a good song. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, this is a song I always go back to whenever I'm down and, and uh, things are going wrong in the world, and we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. So this is a song that says, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the miry clay. From the miry clay. I'm glad he washed my sin away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad He brought me from the miry clay. From the miry clay. I'm glad He washed my sin away. I'm glad I'm saved. Are you glad you're saved? Amen. I know you need. We need to give God praise. I, I tell you, sometimes we just want to sit back and listen and. Just do our own thing, but we need to do give God the praise while we're here. And on this life, I'm telling you, the church is so quiet anymore. I, I don't understand how, what the pandemic that we've been through and the people that, that have walked with God for so many years, and then they just quit coming to church. Now, I, I'm not putting anybody down. I know the people, it, this, this pandemic has been hard on everybody. But even, even at that, we can, if we're home and on the air today, give God praise for everything. Amen. All right? He is a wonderful God. Come on in, brother. Amen. Go to, there's room for all. Amen. But... Uh, Listen as we go ahead and sing this song. Uh, we're going to start with the first verse. In a world that's full of sin and full of trouble, and that's what this world is. Amen. We're a divided country today in the USA. It just seems like the more Satan can get his foot in the door, the more he will. And we just can't allow him to do that. In a world that's full of sin and full of trouble, we never know just what tomorrow's gonna bring With all the bad news and the sorrow that's around me It just makes me feel so glad of this one thing I'm glad I'm saved I'm glad I'm saved I'm glad I'm free I'm glad I'm free I'm glad I'm covered, covered by, by the, the blood of Calvary, Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the miry clay. From the miry clay. I'm glad he washed my sin away. I'm glad I'm saved. Now I'm watching and I'm waiting for the moment when our Lord returns to call his church away. And with gravity turns loose from this old body, I'm gonna rise up shouting, I'm so glad I'm saved. 
I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered, covered by, by the, the blood of Calvary. Calvary. I'm glad he brought me from the miry clay. From the miry clay. I'm glad he washed my sin away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad he brought me from the miry clay. From the miry clay. I'm glad he washed my sin away. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's good to see my barber here again today. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to look at you, buddy, and, and, and say I'm glad my barber's here. But he's back here. Bob, appreciate you coming back. Um, and, and it's good to know you can trust people today, some people. You can't trust. But you know, this guy is a karate instructor. And he's, a, you know, little Titus. <laughs> he's got so much full of energy and everything. And we took him down there, and Bob said, yeah, I'll work with him. And uh, he just loves it, little Titus. He just <laughs> loves it. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you here today, Bob. Appreciate you. But we, we can trust people. Bob's, uh, by the way, he's, he's preached before. And knows God, so that makes a big difference in my life. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see if I can get this here. You've been my life for so long, you were right. I was wrong, I can't repay all the love you've given me, Amen. you were my friend, when no one cared, I was alone, but you were there, Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I what you'd have it be I'm your child and you're my father I'm the clay and you're the potter Lord you're the best thing that ever happened to me borrow treasures borrow dreams all I store given me when trouble comes trouble you're times. always there He's to always make there. me smile come what may thy will be done I love you Jesus God's precious son for you're the best thing that's ever happened to me I what you'd have it be I'm your child and you're my father I'm the clay and you're the potter Lord you're the best thing that ever happened to me hey, let's worship the Lord sing it with us for every time that I have failed each time I stumble and then prevail, you pick me up and set my feet on solid ground. Jesus. Why you would love me, I sure don't know, sure don't but mean. I'll keep singing as I go. Lord, you're the Just best listen. thing that's ever happened to me. I owe it all to you, Lord. Sing it. I owe it all to you, Lord. All I have is you, Lord. Take my life 
and make it what you'd have it be. I'm your, I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the, I'm the clay and you're the potter. Lord, you're the best Thank thing you. that ever happened to me. Amen. Good job. This week I got thinking about Sister Ella Coburn with her funeral and all, and the impact that she made on me and my life and my Christian walk. And, and uh, she's been a part of me going church to church since I was a kid. And um, I just thought, you know, it's such a blessing to know of all the different times that she's encouraged me and prayed for me and prayed for my family. And I'm sure all the times that I didn't know about. And uh, I got thinking about all the other people that I know that have prayed for me. And so many times that I don't know when they do, but I know that God told them to and they did. Amen. And I'm thankful for that obedience. Yeah. Because I know it made a difference in my life. Amen. And I'm so thankful for the prayers that are said even now for me and my family and my unsaid loved ones. And uh, my prayer is just that I'll be obedient to what God wants me to do. Amen. <laughs> moves on my heart to pray for somebody or to talk to them or send them a card or whatever it may be, but I'll be obedient to what he wants me to do. Yeah. Amen. Bless you, David. <coughs> Someone else this morning. Someone else with something to offer to the service. Come on, Regina, and sing for us. Bless your heart this morning. Glad she's here. Glad she's obedient to God this morning. to be back again and I hadn't been here for a little while and that's because every time I turned around Rachel was getting in contact with somebody that had the COVID and we you know thank God that none of us has gotten it you know God kept us all safe where we you know didn't have it or my son you know works out to the pen and he would come in contact with somebody and it's like you know I need to get back to church now stay away from people you know because I you know I, I loved coming to church you know I can remember, you know, when I was younger and was raised in church, it's like, oh, my goodness, we got to go again tonight. And then, you know, I you know, went out and to the worldly ways and refused to go. And when God took my first husband and I got mad at him because he was so young. And my brother had asked me to go to church, and, and I told him no. And he said, Why? I said, you tell, him, tell me why God took Ronnie at 44, and I'll tell you why I'm mad at him. But, you know, he was saved. He got saved two months before he died. But then, you know, then after, you know, he got saved, he looked at me one day, and he said, now it's your turn. And I still, you know, refused to go to church and everything. But, you know, I'm glad tonight that I was supposed to work that day, and um Mom and Roy had been asking me to go to church to the revival up at Mount Carmel. And Roy had called me and asked me to go. And I said, well, you know, by the time I get off work, church is, you know, already started and all this and that. Well, that morning I got up and I couldn't hardly walk. My back went out. So I called the boss and I told her, you know, I was doing private care. And I told her, I said, you know, I'll try to make it, but my back hurts so bad. She said, I've already got somebody here. She said, don't worry about it. And I know that was God's way of letting me know that I need to go to church that night. So I went to church. And Mom and Lee was up there singing, I am blessed. And I got to thinking, you know, I was blessed to be raised in a Christian home, blessed with two parents that loved me dearly, blessed with six siblings, blessed that, you know, God gave me my kids. And back then I was healthier than I am now. And Mom kept singing and kept singing, and I kept thinking if she just sings one more verse, I'll go. One more verse. Well, she just kept on and kept on. And, you know, I couldn't hardly walk because I had a big bone spur on my foot, 
But when God touched me and I stepped out of the house, like I just ran. I didn't feel a pain once. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I went that night. And I'm just going to keep working for God as long as I can. As long as he is by my side, I know that I'm going to make it and I'll see all my lost loved ones. I went to bed with singing this in my mind last night and I woke up singing it. So I felt like it's just, you know, God just wanted me to sing this song today. So as I walked down the path of sin, one day I met a man. A halo shone around his head. There were nerve scars in his hands. There was a big scar on his side. His feet showed prints of nails. I knew this was the man who died to save my soul from hell. Then I reached out and took his hand and held it tight and firm. Since I began to follow him, I felt his love return. Each day I'm walking in his steps, for heaven is my goal. For the world has lost a sinner now, but heaven's gained a soul. Oh, the world has lost a sinner now, but heaven's gained a soul. The angels are rejoicing, why the hallelujahs roll. When I walk through the pearly gates, the first I want to see is the man I met on the path of sin, my Christ of Galilee. When he stopped and looked at me, I heard him softly say, Turn now from your path of sin and follow me today. You'll never have to walk alone for you I've done my best. Just take my yoke and follow me and I will give you rest. Oh, the world has lost a sinner now, but heaven's gained a soul. The angels are rejoicing while the hallelujahs roll. When I walk through the pearly gates, the first I want to see is the man I met on the path of sin, my Christ of Galilee. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the songs this morning. Here's our pastor for this morning's message, Brother George. Connie and Jim, can you help me out? Probably C chord. Probably. No, sir. I'll let you play that. <laughs> you play in D? A little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it in C. I can do it. <laughs> Here we go, Angie. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. And then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is 
still God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right and the God of the good times is still God in the bad times the God of the day is still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain, but the talk comes so easy when life's at its best. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you are never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. The God of the day is still God in the night. Thank you. You know what preaching of the word of God is to, Peter says, to stir up our pure minds in way of remembrance. So my pastor used to say, if your mind's not pure, it's not going to get stirred up to this stuff, but uh, to, to bring something forth that we already know. I mean, how many times have you heard that song right there? That song was so popular in uh, the 90s when it came out in the early 90s. It became so popular that you probably, um, and we attended a lot of different churches at that time, you probably couldn't go into a church without hearing it. You couldn't turn on gospel radio without hearing it. Uh, some of those radio stations are gone now. They don't even play gospel music any longer, but that song still goes on. And when you hear that song, it is a reminder. It's not like you've never heard it before, but it reminds you that the same God who walks with you when you're saying, Ooh, isn't this great? is the same God who's there looking down on you when you're sitting in a corner somewhere crying about whatever it is that has just happened that's tore your life to pieces. Uh, he's the same God. And all that does is remind us of that. So this morning I'm going to ask you to do this in this age of COVID and discouragement and depression. I'm going to ask you to do this. Just breathe. If God has blessed you to be able to take a breath, take a breath. Amen. Step back from all the stuff that is posted everywhere and it seems like is even causing believers to lose their mind over what is happening in our country. Just step back, take a breath. Realize that no matter who's in office the next four years, there's going to be a lot of people die lost that you and I could reach if we weren't so worried about who's in office the next four years. Yeah. Get a grip. Realize that God is with us. He is for us. I like what was said once. It was not Daniel in the lion's den. It was Daniel in a den of lions. It was not their den. It was God's den. God put him there, allowed him to be there, and took care of him the whole time. And if he did that for him, don't you think he can do it for us? Yes, he can. Sometimes we don't see 
the things that are right in front of us, the encouragement that God can send our way, the peace that God can send our way. And I, I know it's been um, just a month, uh, even not even a month probably, that I preached on peace um, and Jesus uh, saying that he came to bring a sword and to bring a division. But I'm going to preach on peace again today, the peace of the believer. Not the peace of the, of the follower who just goes to church because uh, you may not have the true peace that God can give. And it's one thing I'm listening to Charlie talking about how we ought to speak more to those who are lost. And, and we need to. That's our job, all of us, to go out and to speak to those that we work with or whether you're a preacher or not. I mean, you have the ability to shine the light to people. But let us never forget that it is God who convicts that person, who condemns that person, who draws that person. Because if he does not draw them, they'll never be saved. So uh, I could feel like a failure, or we could feel like a failure if we don't do anything, and rightfully so. But if we do everything we can do and they still, they still do not trust God, then we're not failures. It is the choice that they have made not to choose to follow him. So if you'd like to read with me this morning... I'm going to read to you from John 14, something very familiar. We're going to hit two or three different places, but chapter 14 of John. I did two funerals this week, and one of the funerals I did use uh, chapter 14 of John because it does bring, uh, seem to bring the remembrance of peace for those who are followers of of Jesus, if you catch the very beginning of it, of chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, he says. And he continues to say of the place prepared. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus says, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus says to him, have I been with you so long now that you, don't even, you still don't even know who I am? Well, we jump down to verse 20. Still words in red, still words of Christ. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, if you're in here today and you don't have peace, maybe that's why. If you don't have the Holy Spirit that is there to comfort you. Now, this is a free will Baptist church, but I will tell you that Pentecostal and apostolic people are not, they do, do, do not have the only churches that speak on the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, the scripture says you are none of his. The Holy Spirit is the part of God that comes and lives he comes and lives in us. He brings us peace. But the Comforter, Jesus says, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So there's going to come a time when the Holy Spirit brings these things back to their minds. That's how these men that are here, the ones that wrote the last half of this book, the very chapter that we're reading here that's how these men uh came to write this the holy spirit moved upon them brought to their remembrance these things and they begin to write them down years after these experiences verse 27 jesus says peace i leave with you did you ever leave something behind did you ever leave the house and forget something and just well i just uh, and you start looking around for it, and you can't figure where it is, and it's at the house. I even watch. It's comical, and I know as soon as I say it, it will probably happen to me. But it is comical to sit at our office, and I'm sitting there, and maybe I'm making phone calls or whatever. I'm in my car, and I watch somebody start walking towards the office, and then I see them come back out and open their car and get their mask and stick it on their face and walk in. They left it. It's just something that... Jesus says, peace I leave with you. So wherever you are, it's there because he's leaving it with them. My peace I give unto you. 
That's a pretty good statement right there. My peace I give unto you. Not George's peace, not Charlie's peace, not Regina's peace. Why? Because sometimes we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. We're God on the mountain, God in the valley. Sometimes we're up here, sometimes we're down here. And when we're down here, sometimes we seemingly don't have the peace that we would need to have. But that's not the case here. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. So he's given his peace to us. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. How many times have you heard this? You can quote it. This is the remembrance part. This is what makes a teacher, a pretty good teacher in my mind, is that they go over things and the student then doesn't have to have the book in front of them to know what the lesson was. You're not always going to have the Bible, but you can have it in here. As I sat with my mother-in-law last night, I told Teresa, uh, she asked me something that she's probably asked me six, seven, eight times before in the last four or five or six years maybe, but uh, she seemingly thought it was the first time she had asked me. I'm sitting by her bed, and she says to me down in the ER, she says, I want to ask you a question now that we're together and we can just talk. She says, "Um, George, she said, at night when I turn off my television, She watches Game Show Network, and she does word puzzles, and she lives alone. She's 82, just about. and She says, I turn off my television. It gets about 10 o'clock, and she said, and then I start with, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And so she goes through that. And then she starts quoting scripture that I had no clue of even that she even knew. And she starts quoting, and here's one of my favorites, and she starts quoting from the Psalms. And then she uh, says, uh, starts quoting that, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then she says, even the Lord's Prayer. And she was worried some about the Lord's Prayer. She said this before. She didn't mention it last night, but she said before, is it wrong for me to say the Lord's Prayer the way I say it is? Not exactly the way it was in the Bible. I said, Bessie, that was just a blueprint for us. I said, we don't have to say those words word for word. It's not like a magic potion. It just, poof, all of a sudden, it just happens. I said, that's just a blueprint for us. I said, so you're okay. That's fine. I said, it's good exercise for your mind as well. She said, but then I start praying for all of my kids. Now, that's a pretty big job. She got, um, you know, seven girls, one boy, and... And um, a few decent son-in-laws and uh, (laughs) a whole bunch of grandkids and great-grandkids. But she's telling me how she prays. And I'm thinking to myself, I should have invaded her privacy and recorded that on my phone because she was just laying back, rubbing her hands with the IVs dripping. And she was just going on and on and on. She didn't have the book in front of her, but she had it in here. And she will tell you there are some times what's in here she can't get out the way she wants to. But she had that in here. You know why? Because I believe it was in here. It's she has read it. She has put it in there. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is the second time he starts this very chapter with let not your heart be troubled. Why? I mean, why, how, why would he say that? I mean, how can we not let our hearts be troubled? He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. And so he's given them reason for their heart not to be troubled. And so, folks, today, if we ever need a reason, and I'm preaching this this morning, and I realize that no matter who it is that will watch this or listen to this or even the folks that are here, I realize that we're not all walking the same path right now. I mean, you all don't have the same amount in your bank account that Teresa and I have in ours. And you could say, whew, thank God. <laughs> and we don't have the same as you do. We don't own houses like you. You don't own stuff like us. We, we're human. We go through certain experiences, but you may be experiencing something different right now than I am. And for me to stand up here and chastise someone because the lack of peace in their life would be wrong on my behalf. But I will tell you that if you pick up the Word of God and you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you start getting into what some of these men went through after Christ died and how they followed Him and how they their lives were taken from them because they loved Him, 
him, you will find out, and even into the back of the book, that the things that are happening today in our society are going to happen before his return, before we are gone. Some of the things that you are seeing happen right now are going to happen. So why are we so shaken by them? We have a Savior who sees everything, knows everything. He knows the minute that that furnace is heated up that we are thrown in just like the Hebrew boys. He knows where we are. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something, folks. Hang on. Hold on. The peace that passes all understanding can be what keeps you through this time. Let me find this. Scripture here. The book of Isaiah says to us that he will, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you. Isaiah 26. When I read that, I don't see where he will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon Facebook, CNN, Fox, Newsmax, no matter what it is, no matter what you watch, no matter what you listen to, he won't keep you in perfect peace when you've got so much of the stuff of the world invading you that you can't even hear what's going on. Have you ever sat in a room with someone who, maybe you're like this and God help you. Well, I know some of you are, and I'm sorry, Jim, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about you, but... Have you ever sat in a room with someone that has a little bit of difficulty hearing? And they don't turn their television down while they're talking with you. Now, I, I have before. And they've expected me to sing with a guitar over top of their television that they can barely hear. And NASA can hear it. I mean, it's like everybody around them can hear it, but they can barely hear it. So there's that, and I'm thinking, how can you hear what I'm saying? And I, I don't want to be rude about it. I'm thinking, you know, I mean, if they're comfortable with it, I'll sing while they're watching Days of Our Lives or whatever, I, you know, uh, whatever they want. But with so much noise coming at us, and it, folks, it's coming from everywhere. It's coming from the media. It's coming from your workplace. It's coming from where, it's coming from our families at times. So much stuff coming at us. It just seems like noise, noise, noise. Tune it out. Turn off the tube if you got to. Tune out the world. Listen to what Jesus has to say to us. That's, that's the problem. It's not that he's not saying it any longer. It's not that the Holy Spirit isn't here for us. It's just that sometimes our ears are so stopped up that we're not hearing it. We're listening to everything else. Oh, we, we don't really consider what the Word of God has to say about something. We want to turn on our favorite preacher and see what he has to say about it. Or we want to turn on our favorite commentator and see what he has to say about it. And really when it comes to that, I can think, really, who cares about that stuff? See what the Word of God has to say about it. Will we all live? Yes. Will we all die? Yes. So what do we do in between then? You can either rely on the world or you can put your faith and your hope and your trust in God. And when you do that, he gives us peace. And there are times, folks, that you're going to need peace. You know what I mean? Here's John the Baptist. And he is, the first time John and Jesus meet was right before Christmas. Right? The first Christmas. Here comes Mary, Elizabeth's pregnant with John the Baptist. Here comes Mary, pregnant with Jesus. Mary speaks to Elizabeth. John the Baptist, the baby, leaps in his mother's womb. <laughs> That's the first time. They never see each other, but pff, there's something about the voice of Mary. She's carrying Christ, and John leaps in his mother's womb. Years later, John is standing on the shore of the Jordan River, and he's baptizing, and he's preaching. And there are people that don't like some of the things that he's preaching. And he, and he doesn't, he's not the best-looking uh, preacher in the group, probably, either. You know, I mean, he's not wearing a two- to three-piece suit and a big Rolex and all that jazz. Here he is, is a locust and wild honey, and he's probably a little scruffy-looking fellow, but he's down there, and he's preaching, and he's baptizing people. Baptism took place long before Christ. 
So this here he is, he's baptizing, and here comes Jesus down to the shore. And when John sees him, he says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And Jesus comes out into the water, and John says, um, I need to be baptized. Jesus says, I need to be baptized of you. And John's like, no, you need to baptize me. But it had to take place this way, so he baptizes him. And John's words are, he must increase and I must decrease. I think it's real important for preachers, pastors, clergy, whatever you want to call them, to get that through their head too. There was a song I, I've uh, only heard it once on the radio, and I'll just be honest with you, it's not really my style. It, it, it's Christian music, not really my style, so I'm, I don't listen to it a lot, but... Uh, yesterday I was with Teresa, and I know that's her style. And the songwriter said we have pastors, preachers who are rock stars or something to the effect. And I thought, isn't it a shame that people put so much emphasis on who their preacher is? Hey, my preacher's this guy. You know what? If you don't even remember my name. I mean, I don't come here for accolades for what people can say about me. I mean, and that's not a, a false humility. If you knew me, I'm like Jimmy Dummett. If you knew me, if you knew the things that I struggle with sometimes in my mind, if you knew uh, the things that, uh, that I, here I am trying to help other people, and sometimes I'm thinking, God, I need more help than these other people I'm trying to help. It's like somebody on the battlefield trying to sew somebody's, uh, uh, stitch somebody up on their arm, and here, here is my legs hanging off. God, I need help. But... Sometimes we put other people way up here. The person we should put way up here is Jesus Christ. We should put him way up there. And uh, we should praise him and we should worship him. But here's John. He's decreasing. Jesus is increasing. Weeks later, maybe a month or so, John's in prison for preaching. Um, preaching and standing on what the values of the word of God would be. And uh, he's about to lose his life or lay his life down, however you would look at it. And he's in prison. He's got about two disciples left. And see, disciples are just somebody that followed after and followed the disciplines that their teacher would teach. And so these two disciples come to Jesus and they say, we're John's disciples. He sent us to ask you, are you him? Can you... Folks, I don't know, if you slow down long enough and breathe, get this picture in your mind. John the Baptist, baptizing Jesus. Here he is. He takes away the sin of the world, baptizes him, <laughs> brings him back up, Brother Ron. He must increase. I must decrease. Now he's in a prison, and his disciples say, John sent us to ask you, are you him? You can't tell me John wasn't a little discouraged. He wasn't a little... Why would you even ask if it's him, if you weren't discouraged or depressed or afflicted or afraid maybe? But here he is. Are you him? Or should we look for another? I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you choose to walk away from God today in your relationship with him, there ain't no need to look for another because there is no other like him. And Jesus said, you go back and tell John that the blind see, that the deaf hear, that the lame walk. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. And after he sends them away and they go back, John does and is beheaded, does lose his life for his stand on um, his belief from Scripture that we find today. So he's, he's going to die Jesus sends them away knowing that John is going to die. And he looks at those around him and says, there's none greater in the kingdom of heaven than that man. You think Jesus didn't know where he was? He's just speaking peace. Go back and tell him, yeah, it's me. I know where you are. I know what you're experiencing. When it becomes personal, everything else is blocked out, right? 
an illustration. Society going crazy because we come through an election year and things didn't happen the way some people would wish. I may be one of those people. If you want to know, ask me after service. But Jesus knows exactly where we are, and that is so minor. That is so minor compared today to the parents who have birthed a child into this world. And that child today is in children's hospital fighting for their life. Those parents could care less who's in the White House right now. It is so personal. The battle you fight is so personal at times. There is a beautiful song. I love bluegrass gospel music. There is a beautiful song that Bill Anderson wrote that was recorded by Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers, and it says everybody's fighting their own kind of war. And it talks about a man pulling up at a red light, and he's saying, Honey, he's talking to this woman in front of him. Put that cell phone down. I'm going to be late for work. I ain't got time for this stuff. But he doesn't know that the woman in the car that he's trying to talk to out his window has just got a call that her mother just died. And it says we are all fighting. Life is a battlefield, and we're all fighting our own kind of war. And we are. But Jesus can speak peace to whatever it is in your life that's causing you the problems today. He, after Jesus is crucified, you want to find some scared people. <laughs> you would, if you were to look, you would see that the disciples are gathered together. And they are afraid for what is happening, for what they've seen happen. And they fear, no doubt, that the next thing is going to happen that they're going to come looking for them and they're going to lose their lives for being followers of Christ. So the disciples are fearing. In John in 20 and verse 19, it starts like this. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, what did he say unto them? Peace be unto you. He knew they were afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, he just said in chapters back. Now he's saying, peace be unto you. They're afraid because of the Jews. They're afraid that they're going to lose their lives. And their leader's already gone. And what's the first thing Jesus, when he shows up, does he say, hey, man, I'm hungry. Bring me some food. Mm -hmm. No, conversation doesn't go that way at all. He says, Peace be unto you. And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. And then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. Listen to that little part. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Maybe today if you're discouraged... Maybe it's because in all of the mess around you, you're not seeing the Lord. So quit focusing on everything else that the world is shouting to you. You know, you don't have to be. You don't have to fit in with the crowd. You ever, when people don't fit in with the crowd, they're usually called weird or, well, oh, there's something wrong with that person. Look at their clothes. They're weird. Look at how they act. They're different. And I'll give you different, but weird? I don't know. Peculiar? Does the word use that about us? The weird peculiar? We are different. We don't have to fit in with how the world does things. <laughs> I go back to this. Whenever I was a kid, you know, you know bell bottoms were big. And, they, and stuff comes and goes and like... Could you imagine? Uh, do you all like this sweater? It's burning me up. <laughs> Teresa picked it. If Teresa ever picks bell bottoms for me to wear in a pulpit, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ron's going to preach that morning because I ain't getting up. <laughs> but there are certain things that, you know, happen to people just like, oh, we got to do this. We got to be in with the in crowd. 
I'm going to tell you something. The in crowd may say they're following and believing in Jesus, but you start looking and watching the people that have true peace, you'll start finding the people that have true faith. Is it a tough world? It is. You all know the battles that we've experienced in the time that we've been your pastor, the things that we've experienced with our family, the things that have happened to us, the things that have brought turmoil to our lives. You see those things, and, and we're pretty transparent about that. And um, is it difficult? It is. But what do you have to do? Not wait till at the end of the day to say, oh, I need to take a breath. Man, sometimes you need to do it first thing in the morning. <laughs> when you wake up and feel like you've already been kicked in the gut, you just need to take a deep breath and realize, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. So I'm sitting over here this morning, and if it were this way, as I sat there, if I was so distraught and so discouraged, and no matter what it was, and I'm not, I'm not making light of people or making fun of people, but, oh, my lands, I've seen so many people who should have, if they were going to post anything on Facebook over the last four years, it should have been God is good, God is good, God is good every day, but it's been so much stuff, and now their world's crumbling down and these are people who are leaders in our churches i'm thinking you can't put all your faith and your hope and your trust in this secular world it's not going to last anyhow and what about all the time you put forth that effort into that and there are people around you that are watching you that have absolutely no peace and they need the peace of god and all they hear out of you is well i hope this person gets in i hope that person gets in and Oh, gee whiz. There are more important things. You say, George, don't you worry about the world your kids are going to grow in. I'm going to tell you, my kids, my grandkids are going to grow up in the world, period. There's nothing I can do about some of that if I don't start taking care of what is right in front of me here. Do you know why it feels good to sit on this church pew or any pew in this church? Every Sunday and every Wednesday is because I know that God, that Jesus Christ is the rock. He is my foundation. I don't, if things may shake me through the week, but I'm going to be right here. If my kids and my grandkids want to know, I know when I moved to Myrtle Beach, uh, my daughter said something about it's Wednesday night. You're going to church on Wednesday night. I said, when has it ever been a question if we're going to go to church on a Wednesday night? That's what we do. We don't just do that because we're trying to keep face we do that because we have faith and hope and trust in God it's a place of corporate worship I can come here the church doesn't save me but I enjoy being here this is a foundation for me I'm going back out in this crummy old world here in a little bit after Ron's done teaching Sunday school I'm going to go back out and the world is going to battle me with everything it's got when I come here I think this is one thing I want my kids to know my grandkids to know that if, it, if I die and it is in this church where they have my funeral and they move this little thing out of the way and they put a great big old casket in here and I'm laying in it I want my kids to be right up here my grandkids to be right up here and know that I put my faith and my hope and my confidence and my trust in my Savior Peace I leave with you. George, my peace I give to you. He gave it to me. He's given it to you too. You just need to tune out the world. Tune it out. And listen. Take a deep breath. And listen to him speak to you. My sheep hear my voice. And another they will not follow. Stop being panicked. And stop putting so much confidence in yourself. How am I going to take care of my family? Do you really think you're the one that supplies everything your family needs? <laughs> I mean, how are you going to take care of your family? If God don't give you breath, you ain't going to do anything. So we put our faith and hope and confidence in Him and allow Him to give us the peace. Folks, if this is you this morning, I would say don't be discouraged. Take your, it, if you take your ability that God has given you today to breathe, like Sister Gina said, she has a had COVID. Gina, I've had it. Wasn't much fun. Still today, there are times I think, whew, I don't breathe as good as I used to. 
But guess what? With every breath I have, I want to praise God. <laughs> did he know I was going to get it? Yeah, he did. Did he allow me to get it? Yes, he did. <laughs> did he help me come through it? Absolutely. So I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. No, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him thanks. And I'm going to attempt to live with the peace that he gave me. You heard the saying, ignorance is bliss. If you're panicked over the world and the society, turn off the tube. Be ignorant a little bit. Get you some bliss, right? <laughs> Don't be so worried about, hey, the sky's falling, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. The sky's been falling since the Apostle Paul said what I preached last week in the last days, perilous times will come. It's been falling for years. But we still can have peace through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Let's stand today and, I, and we'll just, uh, Miss Connie will come to the piano and play us a, a tune. Maybe you're here today and you just like to pray. We have these altars you can pray at. Maybe you can pray at your seat. If there's something you'd like to pray about, we'll give you this opportunity today. Announcements we need to make before we go into Sunday school. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Yes.
Okay, folks. God bless you. Glad to have you. Sunday school following this morning.